All right, evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Late Night Dominion, episode five. Let's take it over to Oroshi. Welcome to Late Night Dominion with your hosts, Aegon the Ginger Techno Mage, Beetle the Bearded Gamer, Musclebound Blank Space, and myself, Oroshi the Token Brit. Welcome to tonight's episode, and Blank will now introduce what we'll be talking about tonight. Cheers. How are you guys doing tonight? I'm going to talk a little bit about the patch notes that were leaked, but by Carbine this time. We're going to talk a little bit about the Elden games and what that means for the community. And for those of you who are hoping to see possibly Jen, who is also known as Bardic from Carbine, they couldn't make it. They said they had to go home. They had to rest stop. They had to get ready for the ass whooping that's coming this weekend. So let's hope that they, uh, they feel all nice and rested for the uh, beating that's coming, and uh, we'll see him next time. I do want to mention that links are not allowed in chat. I do believe Nightbot has been uh, put on watch. We do, however, <laughs> collect as many questions as possible about stuff as we go. So Nixus will be collecting those up and putting them in the document. We will get to them at the end of the show, so feel free to ask anything and everything. We will definitely get to them, most of them. do also want to mention that Make sure to follow us on Twitch. You know, we all have our little ats for Twitter and like us on Facebook. So with that, let's head right on into the news. The patch notes were leaked this week, as I said, but it was an actual reveal from Carbine as part of the Wildstar Wednesday. Also, IGN did an interview with Jeremy where they talked about the first area to do open world PvP in. This area is called White Veil, and wanted to get some you know some ideas of what you guys saw so beetle you know from that interview anything really jump out to you yeah the uh the biggest thing to me is white veil you know they said it's going to be the first area where you're going to be running by and you may see the other faction and that's i mean we're probably going to for the first week or so we might call this gank central you know stuff like that and it's just really <laughs> exciting to finally get a hold of what's going to be the first area that's going to be like, oh, wow, is that a different race from the faction? It's like, everybody remembers that first area that got ganked, you know? <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be good times. I mean, I'm probably going to gank people. I enjoy ganking. I think it's funny. Hiroshi might need a bodyguard in this area, so <laughs> White Veil bodyguards. Uh, Hiroshi, what do you think about White Veil? I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping they kind of take something out of um, War's Book as well and have, you know, some public quest events as well. So you get people come together and have a good fight over something, you know, make it interesting. So you have to team up, have some good PvP. And, um, yeah, I'll be out there ganking people as well. You know, I don't need a bodyguard all the time. Aegon, <laughs> any thoughts about uh, open world PvP for you? Oh, looking forward to it, definitely. Um, you know. Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, Hiroshi can hire me as a bodyguard. I'm sure he'll need it. <laughs> um, nice. I, I, love a, I love open world PvP, and, you know, hey, if you join the server for PvP, you expect to get ganked. It's, it's the way of life. It's my, uh, I love it. Hearing, you know, oh, I'm doing my quest, or I'm going to go get that node, and all of a sudden, I think that dude's red, and red is dead. <laughs> Definitely. Go have a little fight. All sorts of good things start from there. So it, it's, I'm, I'd like to hear that it's something that's been implemented and we're going to be able to get into pretty early as we're going along. So that's really awesome. Um, there's the first dumb. Go ahead and have a yummy little drink. Next little bit we had for news this week. Oh, we're, we're there playing was a the Carmine. drinking game? Oh, yeah, it, absolutely. Like, we play that with Blake every so, week. It is every week. So, <laughs> I think Blank needs a bodyguard. He's going to be so drunk when he's gaming. Oh, my God. Shush. <laughs> I'll end up being your bodyguard more than likely. They had a Carbine Night Press event that ha uh, somebody happened to have a laptop and the ability to stream. So we got to see Jeremy's face again for a few minutes while they chatted about a bunch of things that had to do with Wildstar. It was kind of funny because the guys were just kind of hanging out. They were at this event. And then they were like, hey, we're going to talk to Jeremy Gaffney. And all of a sudden, there's like, everybody's like, Wildstar, Wildstar, Wildstar. It was it's pretty crazy. Um, there's another one. 
Uh, there was MMORPG. They had a live forum Q&A. That was also followed up with tonight. Hopefully you guys got to watch an hour-long interview on Twitch TV that was hosted by Garrett Fuller. The quality seemed like uh, they were trying to work something out. Internets were not working so well, but the, as always, the content was really cool, and we didn't really get a chance to fish anything out of that yet. But again, anything that comes from from Gaffney that's informational mod stars, you know, something you're going to want to look over. So, for those of you who are looking, you know, watching this on YouTube later, it's it's definitely important to check these links out, go in in detail, and be. What were you going to mention about the 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 Twitch TV interview? Well, yeah, I think. The big thing for me, it may not have been, like, a ton of new info for a lot of us. You know, I know everybody in chat here is diehard. They're, you know, every little breadcrumb, they got it, and that might not be new. But the cool thing for me in both these interviews is how uh, dedicated Gaffney is to the game and how excited he is about it. If a dev is that excited about the game, that's always a good thing. And, like, just like uh, Scooter, uh, community manager's tweet the other the other night, he said he rushed home to go play and then figured out he wasn't patched. Like, if you're going home <laughs> from work to go play your game, that's always a good sign. And I'm just, I'm just, it makes me excited when the devs are excited about their own game. That's just my thing. It's, they'd have to correct me if I'm wrong here, and I'm sure chat will. You don't normally see a lot of executive producers out generating, you know, hype like this. They've got some great community guys, not, but not it, it's level, nice anyways. to see. Yeah, you know, it's nice to see the the guy, the guy, you know, the one who's, who talks to the publisher and is like, hey, by the way, this is what we're doing with our game. Uh, mm -hmm. Roshi, didn't you have a comment or two? Yeah, I, I just love to be it made me laugh in it. I want to get in there before we get the comments to our chat channel normal of what pay model. Was him going, we're just here to make money, so whichever's going to be the best in the end for us, so we're going to think through it. I just love that honesty, and, you know, in a game company, I'm going, Oh, we won't talk about that. We want to hide the money. Like, this is dirty, big secret. Everyone knows who in it, in it for. It's enjoy the game and make money. You know, I like the honesty. Yeah. Anyone else? That was really the news for the week. A lot of it was press. A lot of it was uh, interviews from Jeremy. And, of course, the big old leak that was Wildstar Wednesday. So those are our topics for the week. Guys, you can uh, check them out on YouTube when the video is up. And Nixus is putting them in chat for you guys to check out now. You know, make sure to favorite them for later. So we're going to start running into, you know, some of our things to talk about. The first one we have here is flying mounts. Good or bad? The opinions are varied. Everybody has one. Carmine says that they're debating this at this very moment. Right now... They have the ability to have flying mounts, but where do they go? There's been a lot of backlash. People say that it, you know, it trivializes the world. So, before I get into it, you know, Hiroshi, what do you think about flying mounts in an MMO? See, I'm kind of on the fence with this one because I'd like to see how they're going to implement it. Uh, because, like, wow, everyone goes, well, no, and wow, flying mounts, flying mounts destroy the game because you could just skip content. But if you've got a game designed where flying mounts are already included as part of it rather than added later, and they already thought about these problems, because I've had people worried about explorers. But maybe that big mountain top you've got to get a top as an explorer is too windy to get your mountain near. You know, there may be systems they can add in, as they're talking about, to do away some of the problems we had. So, yeah, I'd like to see what they're going to do with it. Because that would affect Sorry. my view on it, I believe. Beetle, flying mounts. Good, bad. Yeah, flying mounts. Yeah, flying mounts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, huh? F fantasy world. I want to fly. Personally, the thing that got, I mean, I love mounts are like the coolest thing to me, and it's just like got to catch them all, Pokemon. And if you can fly on one, that's even better. And the thing that really draws me towards it is their thought process. And I forget who it was from. It might have been Gaffney saying that they've designed the world from day one to have spaceship travel or flight was in their plans, you know, from the get go, which means uh, it's not like it's going to be added later or it's a secondhand thought. So I personally would love to see flying mounts. 
Um, I think some people in chat says, yes, it does cut down on exploration. It's like, yeah, but they're so cool. In this, in this air, in this, this lore, in this world that they have, just think of the stuff that you could fly on in this. Like, I don't know. I just, if it cuts down on my exploration, yeah, I'm going to be, oh man, I'm, I'm here already. But if I'm flying there on a flaming dragon scorpion hydra <laughs> i don't know with robot parts i'm down like i'm so down Aegon, what do you think uh okay flying mouth i like overall i like flying mouth for wildstar and I, there was a previous interview i don't remember who did it i think it was gaffney um one of the top ones but they talked about like the zones aren't technically next to each other um so when you're going from one place to another, you're really going to another part of the world. So if you have flying mounts, it kind of takes out that you know, mystery between what's between that those two zones. I say maybe much later in the game put them in when you've opened up this entire world and people have seen everything in between. But just from the philosophy that I heard in that interview where they're talking about these zones aren't really supposed to be next to each other and how a lot of their, like, their transportation system that's involved with like the settlers creating, you know, mount points and stuff which which will put you in a spaceship to the next zone you know it's supposed to imitate like these zones are not really near each other and you're exploring a wide area and it also takes away from the i think from the whole explore exploration plan as well it really cuts down on running into those random things and, and finding those hidden paths yeah, well, so that's guess, what, oh so go ahead blank go ahead give us your thoughts i'm just gonna say it. you know they have a path called explorer so I trust Carbine to make the right choice to look at stuff. But when you have something that gets rewarded for exploring your game, you know, how do you balance that with something that can explore, move quicker, um, skip content if they want? You know what I mean? So you have to balance it and be like, oh, we're going to make it so you can only have it at this time, you know, at, at Elder Game. So that's my biggest concern when it comes to skipping the content. If we're looking at it from like the big outside perspective, I'd rather have flying mounts be something you get an expansion from now. I, I'd like to ride around in the world. I'd like to have to explore things. I think that, I don't know, there, it's a little nuance to it. And yeah. not everybody wants to, not everybody wants that, that quick looking for group. And we want to appease them. So, again, maybe wait until the future to drop flying mounts when the worlds are even bigger. I know you had something. What was that, Arosh? Oh, no, Beetle, could... sorry. Oh, Arosh, you go ahead. Yeah. Maybe they could just adjust things a little bit to when a flying mount brings you back to certain points rather than being, hey, I can skip to anywhere. You know, it's like a advanced teleport system or something maybe give you less control over where it goes as a way to bring it in as you said if people are going to explore because they want to they're going to do it if people aren't don't want to explore they're going to find the quickest possible route to get that xp to get to elder game and skip everything so maybe it comes down to game design then ultimately yeah and that's and that's when you say it comes down to game design ultimately that's where i feel safe saying that i want them is the fact that 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 they said hey you know, we have designed this game. It may be like how they talked about, you know, Elden games going to different moons and starships and stuff. You know, it may be something like that. Like, if you fly too far off in the wrong direction, you just blow up, but you're supposed to fly to this next planet on your cool <laughs> spaceship, Slave One, whatever Boba drove. And uh, it's it could be that way. But there's another good point that I've seen on the forums is, what if they just do either leaping or hovering mounts? What if my what if my hover bike is four feet off the ground and I'm just I can cruise over rocks and stuff, you know? So there's a whole other thing. It's like, all right, so I have ground mounts which are altered by terrain and have to traverse terrain. Let's say 70% of the rocks or encroachments in the game are about four feet. Well, then we make a mount that costs 20 gold or something that can fly four feet above the ground, just glides like a like a hawk, a robot hawk, and he's just, and you don't have to traverse half that stuff, thus, it's not faster speed, but it's actually moving faster because you're not avoiding rocks and such, I don't know. 
You could develop that whole server gonna... and put thermals into the game. You have to like rise up on a thermal and then drift off to somewhere else. That would limit where people go. That would be kind of cool too, because yeah. then you know that might be part of like what explorers do. If they had to find those things to get up to something that they normally have to fly to. That's a really cool idea, Roshi. And settlers could use it as well. You know, you could put like a heat generator, build it here, or maybe then explorer can get further. There's ways it could take it, I guess. Carbine, good idea. Idea here. <laughs> Amy. <laughs> <laughs> ideas left and Parachutes. right, dude. Those are all good. Moon all right, boots. Uh, <laughs> moon <laughs> boots. There we go. Uh, that's where we had to talk about flying mounts. We'll get to your questions at the end. Um, also, please ask questions. Nixus is collecting them. We do ask them at the end of the show. We're going to continue forward. The next bunch of stuff we're going to discuss is patch notes. Now, we do want to say, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, we're not going to go over everything with a fine comb, because some of the items apparently are going to be part of future reveals. These are some of the things we found were interesting, unique, worth noting, and again, with no context, some of this is speculation, and then some of it's just experience from MMOs. So, first one we have is, the attributes have been renamed with a wild star flare. Brutality, finesse, tech, moxie, insight, and grit. So, Beetle, attributes being renamed. Yes. Thoughts. Thoughts. Attributes. Uh, I like them having a wild star flare personally. It's going to make when people start the game, you're going to be be like, all right, what does this mean? What's brutality? What's moxie? What's insight? But it makes it unique to this game, and it's not. We're not looking at attack damage. We're not looking at mana. We're not looking at. You know, you know your your cookie cutter statistics. It just adds another sense of wild star to the game. You know, you're talking to your buddy at work about how much brutality your warrior has, or something like that. And some other guy's gonna come and be like, "Oh, what game is that?" It's like, "Oh, they have all these awesome names for stats." It just, I think it makes the game more individual, and I like it. Hiroshi, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I like them. You know, the only thing that confused me, maybe it's an American term, is Moxie. You know, I didn't get it up. That one I looked up on the internet was a drink. Maybe that's why they picked it. <laughs> but the rest of it was just like, you know, brutality. I can imagine this big Macari going, Rah! you know, and finesse. You got a little bunny girl bouncing around and little toes looking like a ballerina and then gets beaten up by the Macari. But, you know, it's just that's the idea. It conjures up a, a better image and saying strength and dexterity, which is pretty old and lame now. Yeah, the new attribute names are definitely pretty yeah. cool. They definitely fit the universe, and they, they give you more, I guess you'd say, more in-depth into the game. Like, it gives you more uniqueness. I really don't see how, although Moxie really takes over for magic, but hey, whatever works for them. <laughs> yeah, I guess Moxie was the only one where I was like, huh? Uh, knew the drink. Understand the old Moxie as a term, but... <laughs> Uh, with everyone else here, I agree. It may be confusing for those who are used to strength, dexterity, stamina. However, like with anything else, once you play something long enough, you start to use those terms. Like we've already started, you know, using Elden Game or uh, Elder Game as the term to discuss End Game. Just comes with use. So I th I think that's what we have about attributes. You guys have any questions? Yeah, it, it's something that you know. It's a perishable skill. You're going to use it a little bit, and you'll get used to it, for sure. I'm going to move on now to attribute spending. In the patch notes, it said, attribute spending has been removed. While we do want to retain the, the design of allowing players to customize their stats, we think having two systems, attribute spending and gear modification, that accomplish the same end result was redundant. I wanted to mention... It's interesting that you were able to spend attributes in the first place. So it sounds like maybe this was like a like a first polish on how all of those things work, like your your brutality, finesse, tech, and things. So now maybe you, you there's not so many things to worry about. Like, I mean, I, I, I guess it's now it sounds like all you have to worry about is gear modification. Yeah. I guess is the attribute spending. I mean, maybe they uh, 
they didn't want people really starting to go off class, so they didn't want, like, you know, Tang throwing a bunch of quints into, like, Moxie for no reason whatsoever. So, now that the talents are probably going to be automatically, you know, adjusted per level, um, there won't be as much mix-up or someone, you know, screaming about putting stuff in the wrong place and not being able to, like, being able to afford a respec. Yeah, Beetle? It, 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 uh, it just, it's, it's a game design decision, you know? You either... You either go, you know, you level up and you say, I want this much in brutality, I want this much in this, and then your your weapons only have weapon damage and other modifiers like poison or bleed, or you go the other route, which they're planning on doing here, and saying, let's do it all based off the stats of the stuff. So I, it's just a game design choice, and we'll see what it's like. Roshi, thoughts? Yeah, you know, to me, it does seem like a game design choice. Maybe they decided there was with too many options. You have too many options to, you know, max up too many skills. You know, uh, people are meant to be aiming like one little section and adding in too many slots. You could have max moxie on your tank. You could have max brutality and max grit and max everything because you have so many options to fill stuff out. Maybe it's a way of limiting that, helping a balance. And making the game a little bit easier to understand in this how you implement stuff. Yeah. It, it will be interesting. Gear modification, not sure what that's supposed to mean, but you now, maybe you can put like lots of, we keep saying moxie, so lots of moxie on something instead of like spending yeah. your attributes for it. Like, yeah, they're, that's they're definitely talking gonna about be interesting. They're, they're talking about the the chip system and now, or at least I'm thinking they are with the gear modification, and maybe the majority of these chips are gonna have stat buffs for, you know, not the attribute spending but the attributes themselves, and that's how you're gonna make these weapons and change them around to be. Oh, I really wanted this sword to be so full of moxie, but it's uh, brutality right now. Well, then you put a chip in that's. Moxie, that kind of thing, so you reforge it yourself. All right, we're working, uh, Aegon, if you can yeah, work, work on, on that. that. If on that. the two people that needed link privileges could say something in chat real quick so that we could get that set up. Um, I believe it was uh, Ether and Zap. Then we can dismiss Nightbot from trying to ban you when you try to link something. So going to move on here while that gets sorted out. Next thing we had to talk about was right there. That one. Aegon. Which one? Mentor and rallying. Mentor. Being able to help lower levels without negatively affecting progression. And rallying. Two big parts in this. This happens in PvP no matter what big thing for me is scaling versus items. The second is in PvE, and the important thing to note here is that facing challenges at the level they were intended for achievement, uh, that they were intended for, will give you achievements, rewards, and loot. So I believe they said like a dungeon allowed you to get in at a certain level, but it's actually made for something like five levels higher. What you're going to want to do to try and get more rewards and more loot is try to go in at that at the level that's made for so if it's made for level 20 that's when you go in but you could get in as a level 15 because of how rallying works before we talk about rallying mentor what do you guys think about you know other games that have mentoring i'm not really sure how it works uh, it didn't in guild wars 2 didn't you actually get like you got it was too down, heavy handed you? just across the board yeah. wasn't it um final fantasy 11 had it you'd come down to the level the person you was with so you could help level them up and still experience the game at that point, keeping it fun. And that worked really well, yeah. but in Guild Wars 2, but it's everyone in this zone is now a level 5. It doesn't matter, you could be cap, or you, you know, you just leveled straight down. And... Roshi. Can you guys hear Roshi? You lost your sound, Roshi. I think you just died. Okay. Try to fix your mic. Beetle. Uh, mentoring for you, yeah. being able to help lower levels. 
Yeah, the thing about it is that, that I like is you can choose to mentor and then it brings you down. It doesn't, I, at least from what I've read, it doesn't force you down like Guild Wars did, which is really annoying to a lot of people I played with. It's like, man, I wish I could be in this area, but at my level so I could, you know, not have to worry about all these mobs and this trash I'm running through. So if that's how it works, I'd love that. Um, but being, yeah, being able to choose when to mentor is a good thing, and I think it, it really promotes like helping out lower levels. I get a sound check. Yeah, yeah, yeah Roshi's back. Welcome back, Aroshi. I love Uvu. We need something else. <laughs> Uvu's the best. Thanks, Uvu. It is. Er, it um, is where the is best. It? There it is. So for those of you who can't, who are going to be watching this on YouTube, uh, one of the developers, the community guys, my favorite. Sorry, Scooter. Just came and dropped off a little photo. We're going to work, I believe Aegon may be trying to work on getting this into a scene for you folks. It is a picture. I'm going to describe it until we see it. There's uh, looks like a teacher in front of class. A bunch of the bunch of chairs are knocked over. It says class dismissed, and it has a date on it. A lot of fun speculation. Five twenty-two so, thirteen. I've got a I've got a conspiracy theory already. Oh, let's hear the conspiracy. Right. The chairs are really small. I, I, that is correct. What do you guys uh, What do you guys think? Well. Uh -huh. The chairs are really small, but haven't Makari been re referred to as eight-foot robots in the first place? Because that's Makari up in front. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. My conspiracy theory here is class dismissed. They're saying they're going to school us with some stuff. But I feel like... Now, this is going to get really, really deep, but Jen Gordy, her avatar picture, is that Makari. And I feel like it may be PvP related, and maybe they're trying to signify Jen up there, maybe laying down some <laughs> PvP law. Because if you guys are on forums and stuff like that, that's the avatar and stuff that she uses, and that's her thing. So, and I, whenever I see that picture, I always think Jen anyway. So I'm going, yeah, you're everyone going deep. deep, and you're the conspiracy <laughs> master. But I'm going in, tinfoil hats going on. Jen, I'm watching you. Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Roche? Class I didn't dismissed. think it's big. Macari walked into an exile class and pulled out a gun and went away. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just what's going to happen, deep. isn't it? You know. <laughs> well, I have no we idea. We thought we'd we would bring that to you guys. It just popped up. Class dismissed. Going to be a lot of fun speculation until the date. I'm not even going to guess. All the, the big things I notice is the the small chairs. There's a little scorch mark on the floor. And yeah, I mean, whoa, we could wait, dissect wait, wait, wait. this thing. We yeah, we could. We're, it's, we're not going to stay on it too long, but it's staring at it. It's Sorry. something nice to look at, and we'll make sure to put a link uh, on YouTube for those of you who are watching this tomorrow. All right, all right. Let's move into a couple other things. That it is put Wednesday down as oh. well, so it, it is, is on I, Wednesday. I'm pretty so sure I feel it's like, gonna be. Yeah, it'll be related to Wilds or Wednesday. Let's just say that everybody gets baited yeah. on Wednesday. That's <laughs> yep, that's Sorry. what it is. Everyone gets baited. You get baited. You get baited. Beta. We're done. <laughs> um, so I did want to talk about this rallying. This happens in PvP no matter what, as I stated. Scaling versus items. We all know that we're playing computer games. You, you know, I, I believe the battlegrounds. You can go in. I think from the notes said it was level three. Yeah, but yeah level three and for the one they just released. Now, I'm sorry. Level three for the one they just released. Yeah, level three. Least. Yeah, and um, I'm always interested to see what the scaling is like. You know, if you end up being, you know, level ten, and you have items, but the scaling is, is, is strange or, you know, the algorithm isn't quite there and you end up being even stronger or if there's just like a cutoff point where it's just like, you know, this is the best that you could get at level 30. So, Beetle, I know you like to do a lot of design question stuff. What do you think about scaling and rallying in PvP specifically? Yeah. We've had, I think we've had this conversation before off, 
off stream or whatever. And honestly, what I think about it is there. So you got level three, you got level three gear, you got to scale to level what is it, 30 for the BGs? Now they said in the uh, notes there. So yeah. I feel the easiest way for them to scale to those levels is to th- is to take. Um, so let's just say the stalker. You've got your chainmail armor, you've got your scale armor, and we'll say they have plate armor. At level three, these all have a certain stat, and they all have, you know, a difference in brutality, moxie, and all that junk. Then at level 30, you have plate, scale, chain again, but they have much higher stats. And I think they take the difference and try to compare those to their level 30 items, because you can only generate so many items. They're not doing a Borderlands random generation thing at the high level. And I think what they're going to do is, you know, take these stats that they have here and compare them to the higher level stats and take the average out of that so they are placed at the level 30 stat range. And they're seeing how that works at these levels. And then once they move it up higher, I think that's what's going on. Personally, that's what I think. Roshi, what do you think? I always found it a mixed bag, this one. Because Guild Wars 2, they had rallying effectively in a world v world where you went in as level one character when you were level 60 and you didn't have the skills of a level 60 character but somehow had a twice amount of hit points and it creates an interesting dynamic but it made it boring for me in the end you know but you never seem to got anywhere in the world v world and the pvp sometimes is like that you go in at a level one character in the one to ten cap and you still get stomped on by the level tens you know because if they've got the skills they got the experience so I'm not sure how effective it really is. It just gives you the illusion of being able to take part and not die quite as quickly. I I always just, when it comes to those sort of things, it's skills. You know, you went into Guild Wars, you know, World versus World PvP. If you went in right off fresh, you didn't have a lot of stuff. You didn't have, you know, the bunches of different skills. You weren't able to switch to a different weapon. That's what I worry about. You know, that's going to limit you. Yeah, sure, you could go into, you know, you could rally up and have the same sort of stats, but you're not going to have a bunch of different skills. So when you face somebody who has the same sort of health as you, you know, and the same sort of stats as you, you've only got a couple of skills and they've got a, you know, a full bar, it's going to be the world of difference. So that's my only comment. Any last words, Aegon, on that? Um, uh, like I said, I mean, up-leveling, I mean, no matter what you do, no matter how you're balancing it, in the end, it always ends up coming down to skill because those people higher up, even though they have better gear, I mean, I've crushed people that have had, you know, better gear while I've been up leveled. It, it all comes down to the battle of, of skill versus the gear. Um, especially if they come out with a, you know, a balanced equation of how they're going to balance their gears versus the top tier in the, in the battleground. As long as they're on a basic, but- even. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with you because think of, we're going to use Guild Wars. If you went in rocking exotics versus somebody who just got in, even though he's upscaled, who's going to get who's going to get their face rocked off? Who's going to have their face melted? When a dude's right, running around, he's got a couple things to hit, and the other guy's like, I'm rocking full everything, and I can switch my weapons, and I can do all this stuff. You know what I mean? So... Mm-hmm. But well, the question is really how, how far the upscales, upscaling is going to go yet in the battlegrounds. I mean, if they end up giving it's us true. our skills for the battlegrounds, or, you know, at least or give us a base set of skills for the battlegrounds, you know, because I mean, if you're going to go with battlegrounds yeah. at level three, you're not going to have a base, a full set of skills even. So I mean, they may even lay us out with a base set of skills if we go in and get up leveled. So it's possible that you could get. I I didn't even think about that. It's possible that they could just be like, hey. Here, you know, now you're up level to, you know, max for this group. Here are all the things you can pick from. That would be interesting because that would really level the playing field for sure. Definitely. It would do. That is... Oh, go ahead, Roche. Maybe they could do something like, you know, well, I'm going to give you all the skills. Just here's some extra skills. You don't get such a choice. You still need to give some advantage to the guy who's worked his way up for the system. Otherwise, I'm not sure people would take advantage of it so much. Well, the guy who's trying the guy to get that nice balance already between got progression the, uh, and the guy who works way up already has the advantage. He's got the gear advantage. He's already got the the knowledge of using those skills for much longer than you have them. I mean, 
So it comes down to then it still comes down to skill. He know he he might have the same skills you have that you have been given for being up level, but he's been using them for thirty levels longer than you have, say. Yeah. Well, he's got he's got the time, but the the real question is, and I'll use Guild Wars two again. Is even in Guild Wars two, if you're at level five, five or ten when they start introducing blue and green items, which have the prerequisite names on them as Berserker stuff like that. Who's to say what they're upscaling you to? Are they upscaling you to rare, or are they upscaling you to exotic level gear? And in Guild Wars, even in World v. World, I know my guild, we started calling anybody who wasn't at 80 and we knew were upscaled with those little green arrows, everyone in our guild called them nummy arrows, because you just ate them, and you went for those guys right away, and you're like, I'm free kill. <laughs> Give me my badges. I'm well, going to keep going. Well, I mean, for like, yep. for, for the world PvP, uh, open world PvP, stuff like that, it's going to be a lot harder, or like, about, you know, war plots and stuff. But I mean, like, if you look at Guild Wars 2 and their, you know, structured PvP, which is basically Battlegrounds, everyone had all your skills, you all had the same equipment levels, and you all were balanced out the same. It all came down to skill. I mean, like I said, it all depends on how well it's going to handle the battlegrounds, if they're going to handle battleground scaling different from PV, right, from normal PvP scaling. Yeah, I mean, it's true. We'll, we'll see what happens. It's, yeah. And like I said, are they going to are they gonna scale them to their legendaries or their high, the exotic, their rare? I mean, that's that's their thing to handle, you know? It's like, yep. you this, you guys are designers. That'll be interesting to see. people in beta are giving you good like stuff, that, you know, it's, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But if we're not, if you're not given your skills right. being up-leveled, yeah, I think you definitely will be crushed, because you're not gonna have much of a utility, no matter how good you are. Unless you're, like, just much better player than the other person, and they just totally suck at their, <laughs> their game, even playing all those hours. <laughs> yeah, we'll always hope that skill trumps the gear. We'll always hope that, yeah, and that's, yep. that's what it comes down to, you know? The better players will always win, the people who are communicating will always win, the people who aren't like the majority of players in League of Legends and blaming their team, you know, <laughs> stuff. The team God, player, I play the with skill these players should always win. Right. We all don't carry on our shoulders. That's not how it works. No. <laughs> trying to tell right. me my carry AD Maokai didn't bring this through. <laughs> I just can't believe that. See, I I heard that when you play LOL, Blank just plays on his own, and everybody else just you know. It's carried. I just, and... Yeah, I just carry on Blank my shoulders. Blank plays with dude. his eyes closed. When, when people are, he like, complaining about League, I'm now. like, look. I, exactly. That's how easy it is. Just, what's going on? <laughs> I, we had two more uh, things that I, I wanted want to, to know. No. <laughs> they put in um, two more interesting things. I don't know if there's much to talk about. Maybe you guys have something. They mentioned that Group Finder now uses the individual ratings of arena team participants to find appropriate arena matches. Note that only team ratings are vi are currently visible in the UI. Visible individual that's, rating will be added in a future patch. My one that's question big for their is: whole ELO system. The ELO, how is it going to be done? Um, we don't know. We don't have a lot of information. But as a PvP -er, that's something that I definitely uh, really I, I really zoned in on. I was like, okay, they're they're gonna have some sort of rating system. How's it gonna work? How does it get affected? Always interesting. So we don't know. We'll have to wait until we hear more about that. And the other cutesy little thing that I found was, uh, oh, we had a uh, we had a comment here. I believe Roshi wanted to say something about uh, the ratings. Yeah, when they saying something started at hundred. Yeah, they said team rating we started at hundred. But we don't, yeah. know, how, how, but we don't seems... know how it's going to get calculated from there. Yeah. Interesting, because you can go down. So you're going to come in like middle of the spectrum, maybe? So you're not always having to work your way up, and then if you're not so good, you're gradually going to drift down towards the bottom of the spectrum, and people are going to spread out. Yeah, everyone will come down point, baseboard and then Rather go from than working there. their way up. So rather than like, oh, this is as good as it's ever going to get, you may gradually drift down to matches more your style. And more your play style, where better people are going to drift up. Maybe you make it more an interesting psychological point to start at. I, when it comes to how they do those things, like I'm good with the auction house, but that's about as you know Excel spreadsheety as I get. <laughs> I don't really understand how the ratings go. Uh, I've read that ELO is based on chess, but I started reading, my head hurt, and I felt like I was in college, oh, that, so I just that will hurt like, your head blank. It's too much. It's too much. So. 
Um, any other good to go? Last little thing that I found that I thought was funny was they said, for those stalkers who enjoy hiding in permanent stealth during matches, which are arena matches, now after two minutes of remaining stealth in arenas, stalkers will get hit with a beer can, which will force them out of stealth and prevent them from stealthing for 15 seconds. <laughs> I think that's pretty funny that's and, and a very unique workaround. From so you know somebody who's just like you know, uh, maybe um, the rest of my team's died. It's one on one, and I'm just gonna hide in stealth forever, and you get hit with a beer can. I thought it was cute, uh, Beetle. <laughs> what did you have to say? Yeah. Well, if you're sitting in stealth in the corner for two whole minutes in an arena match, and let's say arena matches maybe last you know five to ten, you're not helping the team. But now if they keep that, we'll see, like, you know, like, Call of Duty no-scopes. It's like, I waited in stealth for two minutes and got, I got, ki I got a kill when I was beer canned for the 15 seconds. It's totally 360 to them while beer canned. So, montage. YouTube. So, yeah, there's little, little things in that that I just find to be really funny. How about you, Roshi? What did you think about that? I just think... Is it just a mechanic? Are they going to have something like a um, team deathmatch where you've got so many spawns? You just take a full team of stalkers in, go and gank one guy and hide in the corner, the rest of the team, and the other side can't do anything about it. Time runs out after 10 minutes, you win. Good fight. You know, that's to me what it seems to be trying to stop. Or that afk -er, You know, I'm going to go and sit in the back of the match, eh, stealthed up, no one can kill me, I'm not going to reduce my score in any way, and I'm going to progress up by whatever XP I get for turning up and... You know, maybe that's you know why we're doing it. I I just find it to be unique, like changing the the names of strength to Moxie or whatever they did. Um, it gives it a, a different feel. It's not, and I don't I don't feel like it's gimmicky. I I find that it it fits what they're trying to build. You know, um, from the videos they put out with the tons of personality to something small like oh this guy was gonna hide in an arena he gets hit with a beer can that to me is super funny so uh and he gets looks like the next a gem or something to make it easier to avoid that beer can oh my god oh. <laughs> get a koozie <laughs> really it's terrible he's gonna god. fire you yeah uh, you can put it to plus plus 30 moxie koozie blocks one of them it's cool <laughs> no roshi <laughs> The answer is no. No. Okay. Next big chunk of stuff that we're going to be talking about is a big deal. We're going to be out raising some money for the kids. It is the Elden Games, the 24-hour marathon, and I'm going to turn this over to Roshi. He is the one who organized the whole thing, who set up LateNightDominion.com. It's, it's our first of hopefully a yearly thing that we do, possibly even more. Take it away, Roshi. Yeah, this is a really big event. It's the first thing we've ever tried to do like this. And it could be one of the biggest uh, community-run charity events from Wildstar, because we're at the beginning of it all. And we're going to be holding a 24-hour marathon starting on the 18th, which is Saturday, at 10 o'clock Eastern. And we're going to go through to 10 o'clock on the 19th of the Sunday. Uh, and we're going to be playing a selection of different games. Why are we doing this? Well, as a group, we wanted to put something back in uh, as a community, we wanted to get you guys involved and enable you to do it yourselves. Child's Play is this amazing charity who takes pretty much every single cent or dollar they're given, turns that into something hospitals need to entertain maybe sick children, maybe have cancer, um, or, you know, multiple sclerosis, whatever it may be, and give them something to keep them entertained while they're stuck in a hospital ward. So the only charges they have to put into it isn't towards like a games console or an Xbox or an iPad is just a postage fee. Everything else is paid for by Penny Arcade. That's why we chose them. Uh, which games are we going to play? We have a whole selection of them. We're going to be playing Team Fortress with Carbine Devs. But to start off with, we're going to kick off with some Planet Side on the Waterson server. And we're going to play that from 7 o'clock east, sorry, 10 o'clock eastern to 2 o'clock eastern. Then we'll be following on some MOBAs, some Smite and LOL. I know we had a request to have some. Vodcast and Vodcast matches for Smite. We won't probably be able to do that depending on how many people turn up. If you want to make this a community thing, not like just us or somebody else. It's just about as a community as a whole raising the money. We're going to move on from there to some MMO time, some Terror, some Neverwinter. 
Uh, Neverwinter Rise being Mind Flayer. I can't remember if it's Terra Server on blank. You know me playing? Oh, man. Tempest. Valley of the Titans? Titan. Valley of Tears? Oh, yeah, Valley, Valley of the Titan. Of... Valley of Titans. Yeah. Valley of the Titans. And it is a uh, open world PvP server, so you can come and gank me. I'll either have a bodyguard or something. We're going to move on from <laughs> yes. there to a Team Fortress 2 game. Um, with the devs, we'll be having several matches, and I believe we were going to have 12 devs turn up, and as well as an apology, we're having 13 turn up, and I have a big long list of names of who is coming. We've got Scott Hafner, who's one of the designers, Steve Strickland, a 3D artist, Daniel Stutz, a concept artist, hope we get these right. <laughs> oh, this is his first name, Ryan, a concept designer, Jason, software engineer, Nate, a senior 3D artist. We have Hugh, the lead class designer. You can ask him lots of questions, maybe about classes. Jen, the senior um, systems designer, very big on PvP. So we're going to be, you know, singling her out for some um, good hamming. Nick, the content systems lead. Um, Marco, a QA tester. Stan Lee, a character artist. Rebecca, content designer. And the late entry, Curtis, who's an associated cinematics designer. He makes those really cool videos we see all the time. Wait, Stan I am Lee? Disappointed. Stan Lee's? We're going to play with Stan <laughs> Lee this weekend? You guys Stan are Lee, right? the concept artist. I hope Carbon yeah. wasn't trolling with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at I'm that. disappointed that Troy's what? not coming to play with us. I really thought he was going to come and play some Team Fortress. Troy is scared. Oh. David, scared. Scared. come on, man. I'm going to Skype you know. call David and talk to him while I'm playing TF2 and be like, look, you're hurting your friends is. right now, Dave. I'm scared. Sh look, right there. I'm scared of you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nathan doesn't have time to play games. <laughs> Troy, you can come and be on our side if you want. <laughs> We're going to be using Grade Call. Um, so the details on our website. So you'll be able to log in from there. All the download details for the games on our website as well, as well as a huge, great long list of donations we had to give stuff away to you guys. Uh, the Ark Ship donations, it's so the Ark Ship Adventure Kit, which is a signed, lovely signed poster, duffel bag, hoodie, uh, bandana like this sexy one, which you can't see now. Uh, <laughs> laptop stickers, mouse pads, pens, USB bracelets. And on top of that, we had the Creek 2 character already given away. We have two copies of Mass Effect, I believe, two copies of Geo's X Human Resolution, a copy of Borderlands 2, a copy of Dark Souls, and I think there's some more <laughs> added to that. There was two copies Nexus. of Mass Effect 3, for the record, not yep. the first one. So. <laughs> Mass Effect 3, so yeah. Big stuff, yeah. Riot Points, Terra Founder Packs, maybe, some X yes. Xbox cards, some LOL cards, some iTunes cards, all from Blank's personal collection. Uh, let me, we got stuff yeah, we picked me, up at PAX East. Yeah, Black has so many so, goodies in his house. Yeah, basically come play games with us. Come, you money, know, money. go ahead to the site and download all these free games. Or download the ones that you think you'll be able to fit into your time schedule. We have the time slots there. And we have a ton of stuff to give away while you're playing. Um, we'll be in the raid call to be sure, like, hey, guys, we're about to do a giveaway in the chat. If you guys have donated, stuff like that, you know, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, and ask us, we, we do some funny things for money as well. Someone's already requested we dance to Thriller. They donated oh $70, God. so we're going to have to work out how to do that. Um, I heard something about Blank maybe putting on his girlfriend's dress and dressing up her makeup. Uh, I'll shave my hair off. I do have some. You know, it's, it's really scruffy. Or paint nails or all sorts of funny stuff. So you find something funny for us to do, give us some money, and we're trying to fit it in. It's all for good cause. We're aiming to hit $10,000. Yeah, blanks right got his. The... Oh mine, I'll take I, the whole uh... lot off. Beetle's gonna dye his beard. He doesn't know it. He doesn't really know it, but it's gonna happen. So, uh, if we hit, we hit. You're gonna have to be watching. And if we hit the goal, mate, he's gonna have to dye his beard. So. And the big thing is, if we raise enough money, we'll let Nick just come out the corner and maybe say something. But, nope. You know, most pretty one. If we hit 10k, Nick just gets to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Either said, it'll give you 50 bucks if you shave off your eyebrows. I shaved my head for 50 bucks. Eyebrows are going to be a yeah. lot more expensive than that. A lot more than that one. <laughs> but, yeah, we, there's a bunch of different things we have. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We have a whole bunch of giveaways to do. We want the Wildstar community and the gaming community to, to come out to show support. 
this is a big number, and, but the biggest part was we believed that we could do it with the community that we have. So, please, we please. We already owe $800. So, we are a tenth uh, of the way there. Yeah. We look I, forward I to just hope you play so many events. If it's one success, we'll do it again in a year's time. And I have a few ideas for a few more events, maybe one for launch, maybe some sort of tournament where people can come and play some smart games with us, or other games, we'll work that out in the future. But this time, come to Saturday, come join in, have some fun, let's raise some money for kids. Alrighty. And, uh, Blank, you want to do the shoutouts? I don't know, we're going to move on down to the questions first. But oh. you can do questions there, Beetle. Oh, yay! I'm so excited! Good All right. job, buddy! Alright, who's excited? You guys excited? Yeah, me too. Alright. Fax Machine asks, question, PvP balance around battlegrounds, arena, or war plots. How should they go about this? That is why they've stated the three different ELO systems will probably help balance out the co competition. Um, Blank, do you have anything about that? How are they going to balance all three of those? Normally, it's done by gear. They just said that they took out so, um, being able to put or your gear is going to be what you put your stuff into. Battlegrounds, Arena, and War Plots, depending on what tier those are, I'm assuming is going to be the kind of gear that you get and what you can put into them. So the balance is going to be probably the gear and the tiers. You know, and I believe they've already said that War Plots is going to be this tier one, tier whatever it is. So that's how they're going to balance it. All right. Yes. No. Yeah, I agree. Um, did you guys watch the interview with Jeremy on MMORPG today? Yes, we talked about that a little bit. We did. Uh, Roshi, what the bleep is your accent from Lobsom? Dominion. Cassian accent. I have. It's a British <laughs> accent. <laughs> That's probably the best <laughs> answer. It's Dominion. Uh, what aspect of the game has piqued your curiosity the most thus far from Mezdek? Personally, mine was the art style. I really loved the art style and how I, I fell in love with the concept art on their page. Um, blank. Aspect of the game. How they seem to take what everyone else has done and said, we're going to try and do this, not the best, but what's best for us. So... It's not just PvP for me, but it's everything. It's the beer can in the arena. It's the the videos they put out on where the Dominion, where the Exiles, those are phenomenal. It wasn't like, I mean, we've all seen different kind of game trailers. That was unique. I mean, honestly, I felt like I was getting ready to go watch a movie. That was really, really cool. So what aspect of the game, how they built up the whole space I always call it the technological space piratey, you know, MMO, and made it their own thing. And they've taken all of these little things everybody wants to see and tried to implement them the best that they can. War plots, 40-man raids, uh, a path system, uh, so that solo players have things to do. You know, it's just, it's everything. Roche? Roche. For me, it's the, the path system. I like the idea of the replayability, so hopefully add to the game. And the fact that when they're looking at the Elder game, they're not going, oh, raids, ticked off, PvP, ticked off. They're looking at the adventure system. You've got some stuff coming out for even just single-player stuff. They're trying to build a complete game. That's what attracted me to it. What about you, Aegon? Aegon? Right, so for me, uh, well, I like how basically Carbine is owning their genre, how the attitude that, that they're putting into this game, the, the throwback to bringing back 40-man raids, um, just just how they want to take a game and really build it how they want, how they best would enjoy it, and then give it to us. All right. I just scrolled down and realized how many questions we have. Holy Moses. All right. <laughs> Is that a lot? Here we it's go. a lot. Let's... <laughs> Let's go. For... We got it. Let's do this. Right. I'm I'm about to go just ham. Could you say ham? All right. 
Uh, Joe Zellas, I'm sorry for butchering the name. My question, I want to see what you guys think. How can the community help Wildstar out of beta? Doing stuff like we're doing right now, you know, bringing, bringing more people into the game, helping keep the community, you know, everyone, a lot of people that are really active in the community, I can look at the chat and say, hey, I've talked to this guy on forums, I've talked to this person, just knowing everyone and just keeping it as a good community and nothing really toxic about it. And, yeah, that's my take on it. Anybody have anything quick? I'm going to keep going. That's okay. the same for me. He answered it. You don't, you don't. You necessarily don't have to be in beta to be helping grow a good community, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, telling your friends, uh, getting on the forums. And not everybody has to do a charity event or have a vodcast or a podcast. When there's so many of them, it just dilutes. Best thing you can do is let people know about it and be, you know, be a positive part in the community and whatever you do. All right. Termis TV, a.k.a. Insult, I'm assuming. From what I've heard, players have had a hard time in dungeons, unusually hard. Are these guys just bad, or we can really hope that there's some skill need for dungeons? These dungeons, I'm assuming there's some skill needed, yes, but with how early the implementation's been, we don't know how many tries people have had, and people at the Ark ship specifically were just thrown in and being like, hey, you've had ten minutes to play the game, here's a dungeon. So, I wouldn't take those... <laughs> as unusually hard at this point and tweaks i would just say from what we've been told they're trying to make this game difficult they don't want you to level to max in two days of power leveling so when they say things are hard when people are hearing that sort of feedback i'm gonna assume that that's what you know that's actually feedback of what we want to hear things are actually hard so it may not be that they're necessarily bad it may be that you need to have some skill. Yep. All right. Um, Mezdek, as far as hype machines compared to other devs, how cool has Carbine been thus far? What could they do better? Um, Carbine's big. For me, the thing that's awesome is they're really excited about their game and they love their game, but they're not necessarily hyping it. They're not like, oh, you guys are going to love this. This is going to be the best shit. You know, it's like, it's the best. You know, best things since sliced bread. It's, they don't. They're building hype with their Wildstar Wednesday and with their... They have an external plan that's going on with their content releases and stuff like that. They're just really happy about their game and what it's at right now, and they just want everybody to play it. I look at it like... It, Jeremy even says it. I'm not here to bullshit you. Well, he doesn't say bullshit. He's like, I'm not here. This isn't a hype mechanic. I'm not telling you about this to hype you up. This is what we're doing. It's very matter-of-fact. He's even stated, you know, in the future... There's going to be hype. You know, that's part of the process. That's part of getting people in. But so far, I mean, they've been letting the community, guys like us, other people that are out there who are making the, the fan sites, who are making the podcasts, who are on the forums and reading every day, they're letting us do it because we're dedicated and we love what we see. Could they do anything better? Nah. Don't change, Carbine. Don't change. And this early, and this early into, you know, before we even know when it's going to get a release date, I've never seen devs this this deeply involved with the community as I have seen with Carbine. Next Wednesday's the release date, isn't it? Yeah, next Wednesday the game's out, so it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so um, all right, so Classic had a question. Do you think they should place restrictions on mounts? And I'm going to kind of mold that in with Clack Carries here. How do you feel about having flying mounts at the level cap or after an area's quest have been completed? I think it'd be a cool idea to have flying mounts at the level cap. It gives another thing for people to look forward to, and then maybe a smaller percentage of them have use to them. Thus, you've already explored the game for the most part. The That'd be kind of a cool idea, yeah. Um, That was answered. Nixus can answer this in chat. Does Insult ask too many questions? Go ahead, Nixus. Um, nope. Well, what if they integrated Sorry, flying into a PvP patch expansion like dogfights and stuff? It could be cool. Joe Izzle asked a question. Flying, integrated flying into PvP patch. I'm not a big fan of flying PvP. If I wanted to fly and do PvP, I, I don't know. I'd go play Dogfighter World War II or something. But anyone else's thoughts on integrated flying into PvP? I don't think mm, it would fit the current game muddy. mechanics, would it? It's very muddy. Yeah, it's muddy to me. I think of the flying to Eve. Um, 
Game Shake asks, how do you guys think the talent trees, their talent trees will work? Will each class only have two trees or three trees or maybe something totally different? Um, it's beta. They could definitely change the trees. I think the majority of them have two. Uh, I'm fine. It's it's something they got to work out with. And I like having classes be able to spec in different things, so I think that's cool. And I think that whenever they nail down the number, I think all classes will have the same amount of trees. Yeah, I'd agree. No right. idea about how talent trees stuff is going to work, but I'm pretty much everybody's going to gonna have the yet. same number. It's uh, immediate thoughts on the Wildstar Facebook pick. We did that. Dropping that bomb. <laughs> Have they said anything about warriors being able to use another weapon besides two-handed tech sword, maybe a two-handed tech axe or mace? They've said that it's going to be stuck, or not stuck, but they're sticking with the sword for animation quality reasons and balancing reasons. Um, I would think that maybe in an expansion they could get more, or stuff like that. But they have said that each class will stick to their one weapon for now. Can I interrupt you one moment, Beetle? I did say on Twitter I was going to give away an Explorer pin tonight to whoever, to one lucky person who's been donating. So, just to remind people. Oh, man. He's got an Explorer pin to give away. Yep. Look out. Ooh. And Rez. Oh, yeah, Honrez gave him that one. Yep. Shout out to Honrez. Duh. Nope, okay. Hiroshi, I want that shirt. How do I get one from Hedge? Uh, I got this when we went to PAX East. So, I'm not sure if it's more. Maybe there would be one in the Adventure Art Kit we give away. We've got four of those to give away. That's just some random t shirts in there, so you may be lucky. What is that one? Maybe you'll get as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's some. Next time, go to PAX. Try to All get right, the swag so, bag. Let's see. Yeah, so we event. got the big swag bags. Or maybe buy uh, one for my thoughts? wife. She likes selling stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Nix's question. So what does someone donate to get a guest host spot for a night on the show? Uh, I think we've said before you can contact us on Twitter, the forums, if you're looking for a guest spot. Um, any of you guys from other shows that want a guest spot, we can work stuff out. Um, contact me yeah. or Twitter so, or email us. And we'll get your name on the list. All right, we're gonna move to the silly fun. Uh, Katarina wants no blank. You drink the special drink again, which is Jack and cream soda. Yes, ma'am, I am. All right. I don't know what that means. Uh, sure. Any of you <laughs> drinking Nexus approved alcoholic beverages? I would yes. hope so. Yes. Sure, yeah. Um, Oroshi, those shades you wear, are they gaming glasses? If yes, what do they do? Are they Gunners from Gunners Optics? They're, they help if the UV light comes from your screen and to give a bit more high contrast. And they're curved as well. You won't be able to see from this very much. But they curve around the eye to create a microclimate to keep it more moist so you don't get dry eyes when playing long gaming sessions. And they actually do work. These ones are prescriptions, so they're particularly particularly cheap for me, but we're normally about $100 if you don't need a prescription, and it's allow you to game much longer. I think Nexus has a pair as well, but they are incredibly good. I wasn't too convinced, um, but it's one of those things I had to have, and then tried it out and loved them. I'm, I'm still trying right, to get them to Nixus send me a is. pair. <laughs> I'm yep. still trying to get them to send me a pair, so... Maybe next time when we have, like, a tournament or something, we could approach them and get, you know, some giveaways or something. Yeah, otherwise, go to Gunner Optics and buy them yourself. You got lots of money in salt. You keep giving it to me. <laughs> I'm going to sift through a couple of these we've answered before. Uh, Sincup asks, is it weird that I try to imagine Beatles' beard on other on the other hosts? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you're a weirdo. That is awkward. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't... I'm not a... I don't know. All right, um, what is this down here? What's this, guys? Oh, Sorry, my we're goodness. Document. Stuff, no, we're going too late anyway. Say no to that. Move to the next one. Nope. Shout-outs. I'm going to shout-outs. 
before you do shout outs going up before i do shout outs um i do want to mention that <laughs> um you can get a hold of nixus or Aegon to talk about getting on the show we do have specific shows that we build based around topics uh whether it's community stuff you know we have we've had artists on our show before uh all depends, you know, what we're building for the week, what Wild Sun Wednesday is. We like to try and get the news for the week out to everybody so that everything we've found that's super important gets to you, but also bring people in from the community. So let those guys know that you're interested. You have to be available at this time. If uh, you'd like to come on to the old, I believe some people like to be on webcam, some don't. So if you want to be on voice chat, you totally can. We have it set up. It's really easy. So, again, if you're interested, let Nixus or Atomics know. And uh, go ahead for some shout-outs there, Beetle. Yeah, and uh, with blanks of the uh, show thing, we do like to mold them around people, and we will get back to you. Just don't feel bad if we go to the next episode and we haven't contacted you to be on the show. We plan on doing quite a few of these, so and we'd love to have many community people on. So, All right, shout-outs. One is to Mission Nexus and uh, Russell for he's the one that gifted the game keys to the prize pool, the Mass Effect, the Deus Ex, stuff like that. Um, Onrez from Settler in Exile, my friend in TF2, for another Wildstar <laughs> pin, uh, the Explorer pin this time, a laptop sticker, and he also donated a Wildstar bandana. And we'd like to... Uh, you want uh, to say the sexy uh, one like mine? Which, oh, the sexy one like Oroshi's? Oh, you didn't put sexy. You just put like a Roshi. The sexy one, like a Roshi's. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Kai Dream. Kai, thank you for uh, volunteering to help promote the event with us. And thanks for saying that you'll come on and play with us on Saturday and for being a Wildstar fan. And, yeah, um, thanks and to everyone else. Thanks to everybody in chat. Love you guys. Uh, I'm blank and I'm trying to do stuff. Social okay, media plugs. Right, right. Explore <laughs> pin. I'm panicking. Don't worry. Hang on, Rush. We'll do that in a second. I'm focusing. Uh, social media plugs. Could you uh, follow the Twitch channel here? We will post um, for our Saturday event. Several of us will be streaming, as well as uh, one of us will be streaming to the Late Night Dominion channel itself. It will post um, our Twitch channel so you guys can get those followed up. And check out and hang out and raid call all that stuff. Follow us on Twitter. You got all of our tweeters at the top here. Look at that little guy. And that one. And that one. And then you can follow our main Twitter at Subterfuge Vanguard. SVG Wildstar? <laughs> SV yeah, I think it's. Uh, at SVG Wildstar. At SVG Wildstar. And like us on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Late Dead Mini, or Subject Future Vanguard Facebook page. And, yeah, farewell. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the stream. It's been fun. Uh, you guys are awesome. You guys are a great chat room. You keep us busy with all the questions. Sorry that we didn't get to all of them tonight because trying to keep it around an hour. And I'm going off at like a mile a minute. That's not even fast. Yeah. I'm gonna rescue you guys want to say goodbye, or you're just going to let me sit here? All right, Thanks, everyone else is going to disconnect from the stream. I was going to sit here. I just uh, <laughs> Thanks, randomized all the up. donators we had, and Sergey from MMO Live won the Explorer pin. I'll be contacting him. Um, Congrats, Sergey. Congratulations. 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 Be, sure if you guys, be sure if you guys do donate, please leave your name, some sort of form of contact so we can get in touch with you for when you do yeah. win. Sergey is going to have an awesome Explorer pin to wear proudly. And, uh, yeah, thanks, guys, and thanks to everyone who's watching this on YouTube. You're hey, awesome. Thanks, everyone, stopping by. Hey, guys, have a great night. See okay, you bye -bye. on Saturday.